Here's lesson five of the discrete functions unit. This lesson is on recursive functions. In earlier sections in this unit, we looked at arithmetic and geometric sequences, and I taught you how to write the explicit formula for the value of any term in the sequence based on what term number it was. But sometimes, depending on what pattern there is between the numbers in a sequence, it might be easier to calculate one term in a sequence using the value of a previous term or terms in the sequence. And when we do that, it's called using a recursion formula, which is just a formula by which each term of a sequence is generated from the preceding term or terms. And in a recursion formula, you're always going to see two things. You're always going to see tn and tn minus 1, where tn just means the value of the nth term, which would make t sub n minus 1 the value of the term before term n. So for example, if n was 5, this would be the value of the fifth term, and this would be the value of the fourth term, which is the term before term 5. Often when I read t n minus 1, I'll refer to it as the previous term, because it's the term before term n. And now let's look at a few examples where we'll practice working with recursion formulas. Starting with example 1, we need to write the first four terms of each sequence. In part a, this is a recursion formula. I can tell it's a recursion formula because to find the value of term n, I'm using term n minus 1, which is the previous term. And also, for a recursion formula to be complete, you also have to give the value of the first term in the sequence. It says term 1 is 7. The reason why we need that is because to find term 2, we're going to need the value of the previous term, which is term 1. Let me show you how that looks. Let's find term 2. So I'll sub in 2 for these n's. Notice when I simplify this, 2 minus 1 is 1. And now I can see that if I want to find the value of the second term in the sequence, I have to take the value of the previous term, term 1, and subtract 2. And I know the value of term 1, it's 7. So I can replace term 1 in my equation with 7, which means the value of the second term is 5. And since I want the value of the first four terms, I'm now going to have to find term 3 and term 4 as well. Let's find term 3 by replacing these n's with 3. And then simplifying 3 minus 1, I see that to find term 3, I have to take the previous term, term 2, and subtract 2. And I know the value of term 2, I calculated it here, term 2 is 5. So my third term in my sequence is 3. And then lastly, I'll find term 4. Term 4 minus 1 just means term 3. And I know the value of the third term is 3, so I can replace term 3 with 3. So now I have the value of the first four terms of this sequence. Let me jot them down in order. The first four terms of the sequence are 7, 5, 3, and 1. Looking at this final sequence of numbers, notice to get the value of any one term in this sequence, for example the last term, I just look at the term before it and then subtract 2. And that works to find the value of any term in this sequence. And hopefully also in the formula, you now fully understand why I call term n minus 1, why I call it the previous term. Because when finding term 2, term n minus 1 is term 1. It's the term before it. When finding term 3, term n minus 1 is term 2. And when finding term 4, term n minus 1 is term 3. So let's say I wanted term 10 in this sequence. If I wanted term 10, I would have to take the previous term, term 9, and subtract 2. And this might show you what maybe the downfall of this type of formula is. When writing a recursion formula, the only way we can find the value of any one term in the sequence, like let's say term 10, is if I have the value of the previous term, term 9. But unfortunately, I don't. So although it is an easy type of formula to write, it does have a drawback of not being able to find any term unless you know the value of the previous term. Which is why earlier in the unit, I taught you that for an arithmetic sequence like we have here, we could define this sequence by stating to find the value of any term, we take the first term and add the common difference n minus 1 times, where the common difference here was negative 2. So this is how we wrote the formula for the general term of an arithmetic sequence like this earlier in the unit. But the point of this lesson is to show you that we could define a sequence like this using a recursion formula as well. So I'll get rid of this arithmetic sequence general term formula, and let's continue working with recursion formulas in part b. Part B, here's my recursion formula. To find the value of any term, I do 2 times the previous term plus 4. 
And also part of the recursion formula is it has to give you the value of the first term. So if I want to find term two, the formula tells me to do two times the value of term two minus one plus four. And of course, term two minus one just means term one. It means the previous term. And the question gives me term one, it's five. So I'll replace term one with five. And I figure out that the value of the second term is 14. And now that I have the value of the second term, I should be able to calculate the value of the third term. I just do two times term three minus one plus four, which means to find term three, I do two times the previous term, term two plus four. And I know the value of term two is 14, so I'll replace term two with 14. And that tells me that the value of the third term is 32. And lastly, let's find the fourth term. To find the fourth term, I'll sub in four for n, and then simplifying, I know term 4 is equal to 2 times the previous term, term 3, plus 4. And we know the value of term 3 is 32, so I'll sub that in. And that gives me term 4 having a value of 68. And then I'll summarize this by writing the value of the first four terms of this sequence. Now after we completed the last example, I pointed out that a drawback of using a recursion formula is that you need the value of the first term. So let's say, for example, in this sequence, I wanted the value of the 20th term, I would need to know the value of the 19th term, which I don't have here. I only have the value of the first four terms. But now I want to point out maybe one benefit of being able to write a recursion formula. Notice this sequence, it's not an arithmetic sequence because there's not a common difference between consecutive terms, and it's not geometric because there's also not a common ratio between consecutive terms. So you don't know a standard formula to be able to create for the general term of this sequence. But now that we know how to write recursion formulas, you can see how writing a recursion formula would be an easy way to describe the values that make up that sequence. Now let's move on to the next example now, where it's just like the previous example, except it's written in function notation. In this notation here, you can think of f of n being tn and f of n minus one is same thing, it's the value of the previous term. And it gives us the value of the first term as being two. And the reason why I'm giving you these in function notation is to remind you that these sequences of numbers can be thought of as discrete functions, where our x value is the term number and our y value is the actual value of the term. So to find the value of the first four terms in this sequence, we'll just work with the equation that has function notation. It gives us the value of the first term, that's two, and now let's use that to help us find the value of the second term. So f at 2, we'll sub in 2 for these n's, and it's equal to 2 times f at 2 minus 1 minus 7. Simplifying this, I see that f at 2 is equal to 2 times f at 1 minus 7. And f at 1, we know its value, it's 2, so I'll replace f at 1 with 2. And when simplifying this, I figure out f at 2 equals negative 3. And this is just function notation telling me that negative three is the value of the second term in the sequence. And now I'll find the third term by replacing these n's with three. And then simplifying, to find f at three, I do two times the previous term, f at two, minus seven. And we know f at two, it's negative three, so I'll sub that in. And then simplifying, I find out that f at three is equal to negative 13. And lastly, I'll do the same thing for f at four. I'll sub in four for n. I'll simplify four minus one to three. And then I'll replace f at three with its value of negative 13. And that gives me a value for f at four of being negative 33. So the first four terms of this sequence are two, negative three, negative 13, and negative 33. Now let's move on to example three where we'll work with one of the most famous sequences of numbers, which I actually introduced to you in lesson one. But we didn't write a recursion formula for it yet. Let's see if you recognize it as we start. Notice in this recursion formula, to find the value of a term, we have to actually add the value of the two previous terms in the sequence. So to be able to use this formula, the original equation would have to give you the value of the first two terms of the sequence, which it does. So since we have the value of the first two terms, let's now find term three. Subbing into this formula three for n, I figure out that to find the value of the third term, I have to do the value of term three minus two plus the value of the term three minus one. And then simplifying this, it tells me term three is equal to the value of the first term plus the value of the second term. 
And the question gives me the values of the first and the second term. They're both 1. So the value of the third term is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. Let's find a couple more, and then once we get the pattern, we'll write the sequence. To find the value of the fourth term, I'll sub in 4 for n. And this would simplify to term 4, equaling the value of the second term plus the value of the third term, right? The value of the two previous terms, which are 1 and 2. So term 4 equals 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then to find the value of the fifth term, I'll sub 5 in for n. And I figure out that the value of the fifth term is equal to the value of the third term plus the value of the fourth term. So adding the value of the two previous terms, I would be adding 2 plus 3, which is 5. So let's start listing the terms in the sequence. The sequence goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and I need to write two more terms. Well, remember this formula says to find the value of a term, we just add the value of the two previous terms. Right? To find the value of term 5, we added the value of terms 3 and term 4. So to find the value of this 5 here, I just added the value of the two previous terms. So if I want the sixth term, I just add the value of the two previous terms. 3 plus 5 is 8. And then to find the next term, I just add the value of the two previous terms. 8 plus 5 is 13. And this sequence of numbers is called Fibonacci sequence which is a sequence of numbers with lots of amazing patterns. I introduced you to a few back in lesson one, and stay tuned, I do plan on posting a top 10 video where I reveal the top 10 most interesting patterns in this sequence of numbers. And now that we've practiced using some recursion formulas, let's see if we can figure out how to write some recursion formulas for sequences of numbers. Starting with this sequence right here, I need to figure out how can I write a recursion formula for that sequence. Well, to write a recursion formula, I need to define the value of term n based on the value of its previous term. Well, this is actually right just a geometric sequence. There's a common ratio between numbers. To get from any one number to the next number in this sequence, we just multiply by negative 2. So if I wanted the next number in this sequence, I would just take the previous number and multiply it by negative 2, making the next number in this sequence, the fifth term, negative 48. But to define that using a recursion formula, what I said in words was I multiply the previous number by negative 2. So to find the value of term n, I just do negative 2 times the value of the previous term, which is term n minus 1. And there's my recursion formula. But don't forget, we also have to state the value of the first term for someone to be able to use this formula to generate more terms. So the first term in the sequence is equal to, I see it's equal to negative 3. So there's my recursion formula. To find the value of any term, do negative 2 times the value of the previous term. So just so you can see how it works, right, if we wanted the value of the second term in the sequence, I would do negative 2 times the value of term 2 minus 1, which is term 1. And the equation tells us term 1 is negative 3. And when evaluating, I figure out term 2 is 6, which I can see in my sequence of numbers, it is 6. And then multiplying that by negative 2 would get me the next number, negative 12, and so on. Let's go on to part B and see if we can write a recursion formula for this sequence. Oh, and for this one, I actually just gave it to you as a graph. Now, each of these points on the graph of this discrete function has an x and a y coordinate. The x coordinate is just the term number, right? What number is it in the sequence? And the y value is the actual value of the term. So let me write the coordinates of each of these points. And then let me write out this sequence of numbers by interpreting the coordinates of those points. This point, being the point 1, 2, just means that the first term in the sequence has a value of 2. My next point tells me that the second term in the sequence is 6. My third point tells me that the third number in the sequence is 10, and the fourth number in the sequence is 14. So each of these are the actual values of the terms in the sequence. Now that I can see this sequence of numbers, what we want to do is write a recursion formula to represent it. So to find the value of any term, what do I do to the previous term in the sequence? Well, I can see this is just a normal arithmetic sequence. There's a common difference between terms in this sequence. To get from one term to the next, you just add 4. So if I wanted the fifth term in this sequence, I would just take the previous term and add 4 to it, making the fifth term 18. So let's write that down as a recursion formula. To get the value of any term, I take the value of the previous term, term m minus 1, and add 4. 
And for it to be a complete recursion formula, we also have to state the value of the first term, which is two. So to find the value of any term, you take the value of the previous term and add four. And let's do one last one that's going to be a little bit trickier. Here's our sequence of numbers. There doesn't seem to be a common difference between these numbers. To get from the first number to the second, we add two, but then to get from the second to the third, we add three, and then from the third to the fourth, we add four. So although it's not a common difference, there definitely does seem to be a pattern. Obviously, if we wanted the fifth term in this sequence, we would just add five to 12, making the fifth term 17. But how do we define this using a recursion formula? It might be more obvious to you if underneath each of those term values, I write what term number it is. Notice that when I wanted the value of the second term, I added two to the previous term. When I wanted the value of the third term, I added three to the previous term, and so on. So in a recursion formula, I could say to find the value of any term, I take the value of the previous term and add n, where n is the term number, right? We said that if we wanted the fifth term in the sequence, the next term in the sequence, we would add five, right? We just take the n value, add it to the value of the previous term, and then we get the value of term n. And to make this recursion formula complete, we also have to state that the value of the first term is equal to three. And to show you that this formula is right, let's use it to calculate the fifth term. Term five would equal term four plus five, right? By replacing these n's with five, I get this formula. And I know the value of the fourth term is 12, and 12 plus five is 17, which is that value that I said would be the next term in this sequence. And then if I wanted the sixth term, I would then just add six to 17, giving me 23 and so on. So hopefully you now have a good idea of how recursion formulas work. And you know that within a recursion formula, we definitely need to use the value of the previous term, but we can also use the term number n if we want to in the formula as well. To get the hang of creating these recursion formulas, make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and get the practice problem set and practice these questions so that you get good at them. Jensen.